Hi, this is Ellie, and you are listening to the Meat and Potatoes Tarot Podcast. Welcome! It's really great to have you back. And welcome and thank you to my wonderful members on Patreon who make everything possible. You are my rock. I treasure you always. Let's have a look. I never know where to hold this. Let's have a look at the next card, which is the Four of Swords. Take a look at a few things here. We have a beautiful, colourful stained glass window. We have a bowl, whole bunch of grey. And then we've got this guy who's kind of yellow looking. What does yellow mean? Okay, the thing about this card is it's all about deliberation and um, using your consciousness to actually rest the mind. Let's take a look at the Four of Swords and see what we can come up with. So let's take a look at these first impressions of the card to begin with. Um, a knight lies upon a tomb in a stone chapel. His hands are positioned for prayer or meditation. His sword is set aside nearby with others attached to the wall above him. In the upright position, the four of swords represents holding back, taking a time out, meditation and resting the mind. In the reverse position, uh, the card represents loneliness, insomnia, self-neglect, and strange dreams. When it comes to the symbols relating to the Four of Swords, the most prominent symbolism is the starkness of the background and the stone, solid stone structures. With the exception of a vibrant stained glass window, the walls are a pale gray. There is no visible sky. Similarly, the color of the night and the stone structure that he is resting upon are devoid of distinguishing colors. However, there is a significance to the colors that do exist. The grayness of the background, coupled with the simplicity of the hanging swords, represents composure, neutrality, and balance. Alternatively, however, gray can also denote clouded thinking apathy and indifference. Considering the color gray as relating to the conscious state is the night pausing to rest between battles. Mm. Now consider the color gray as relating to the conscious state. So is the night pausing to rest between battles or is he hiding from the outside world? The black and yellow of the night not only reflects his conscious withdrawal in the moment, but alludes to an element of mystery, which may reflect the mystery of the mind and even offer a hint at disquieting or troubling thoughts. Remember, having yellow that has a mixture of black in it always has significance. It doesn't matter how subtle the color differences are, the shift in color will always be important. The knight has laid one of his swords aside and it appears as though part of the structure on which he sleeps. In this position, the knight's own sword is the most difficult to reach in the event that he needs it. The other three swords are suspended on the wall but would require careful removal as the sharpness of their tips are positioned as though they may skewer the knight at any moment. Now the stained glass symbolizes vision and perceptions. The perceptions may be mental, physical or spiritual in nature and may differ according to a person's beliefs. The origins of staining glass are relevant to the symbolism of the window which appears in only two cards in the Rider Waite deck. Um, it also appears in the Five of Pentacles. The staining of glass occurs as a form of ancient alchemy for the purposes of creating a transformed appearance on what lay beyond the glass. Therefore, the inclusion of stained glass in an otherwise muted scene highlights the idea that conscious perceptions are in play. The stained glass window is also made up of numerous panels of glass, which collectively form a mosaic. This may reflect the need to solve a puzzle or gather one's thoughts about a complicated experience. But also, the stained glass depicts a scene of people in vibrant color. This may reflect the knight's positivity about what lies beyond the confines of his chapel, or it may be a sign that he's in exile from a world that continues to flourish in his absence. There is a symbol 
that hardly gets mentioned in the Four of Swords, despite being quite relevant. To the right of the window, there is the appearance of a long straight rod with a handle within reach of the knight. If the rod controls a curtain, then the knight is reminded that he was able to control his perceptions by using the tools available to him, which demonstrate the source of what informs him. So the significance of the number four in Minor Arcana, in particular as it relates to the sword sweep. The number four represents stability, structure, and the creation of an anchor point. Um, in, Ch in Chinese numerology, the number four is considered to be unlucky in a similar manner to the number 13 in Western society. And remember, 13 comprises of one and three, which adds up to four. The Chinese relate the number four to death, which is the only moment in life during which a person surrenders all sense of security and safety so that they may experience their ultimate fate. Four of Swords is a card depicting the withdrawal of a person, either away from others or inward so that they may focus on themselves. Depending on which direction and position in a reading the card appears, it may relate to a healthy mindset or an attempt to restore a healthy perspective by pausing for a moment to regroup and reflect. Alternatively, the symbolism of the chapel and tomb-like resting place reminds us of death, and the card's message may be that of an unhealthy withdrawal, such as that of a troubled mind. If you were to ask me what I believe the overall theme is for the Four of Swords, I would say, when life presents you with a mosaic of abstractions, allow yourself a moment to complete the puzzle before you so that you may perceive the world with a refreshed, healthy perspective. So that was the Four of Swords. And as usual, the cards have not disappointed. There's always far more than you might think at first glance. Such deep meaning for such reasonably simple symbolry symbolry is that a word symbolism i think might be the word but you know what let's call it symbolry anyway i'll just call it an ellie word so there you go four of swords another great card in a fantastic deck of cards and no i don't work for right away i genuinely love the right away deck and everyone who watches me on ellie dreams and under gets to hear me say that all the time i can't help myself and in particular i know i'm using brand new giant cards for this podcast but i use my old kind of squidgy around the edges 35 year old standard right away cards to do my readings on a day-to-day -day basis on the ellie channel and um sometimes you know they look a bit fuzzy but i'll never give them up they're going to have to just turn to dust before i replace them I do love the Rider Waite deck and I love my cards. So just a reminder, you can see me on the Ellie Dreams and Under channel. By now you must know I do lots of tarot readings on a day-to-day -day basis and um, all of the readings are free. You could also become a patron and support the work that I'm doing. I'm very, very grateful to everyone who is a member on Patreon. You make my world ground and you allow me to do the thing that I really, really love, which is be here talking to you. I also have a brand new radio show called Human Ascension. It airs at 11 p.m. Eastern every Friday night. And uh, it's called Human Ascension with Ellie. And it's all about our transition into the age of Aquarius and our ascension into a higher level of consciousness, what the signs are, what the converging wisdoms are, and um, how we can identify and help it along a little bit. So I'll be looking at a new topic every week, and I do hope that you'll join me there. Segments of the show also appear on, um, on YouTube, and there's an early glimpse for Patreon members. So another thank you to all of you. Until next week when we get to see another card, and I think it might actually be the Five of Swords. I really do hope you're enjoying this podcast and take care.